Christian, Monsieur Linier. The Marquis. May I present Christian de Duvier. A fine head, is it not? He's a shade behind the fashion. Christian is newly from the country. I have only been in Paris three weeks. Uh, tomorrow I join the Gascon Guards. Ah, there's the Countess Brassai. Oh, we must pay our respects at once. Now listen, my boy, I came here to help you. But where is she? Where is she? I'm leaving. Not yet, please. I'm dying of love and I don't even know her name. You know everyone in the city. You can tell me who she is. What if she's refined or an intellectual? I'm a soldier. I don't know how to be elegant or witty. I'm leaving. Oh, please. No. There's a tavern around the corner and I'm dying of thirst. I I'm leaving this instant. I'm staying for just a minute. Let me have a taste of your muscatel. <laughs> Prince and poet of pastry Linier, chefs. Linier, have you seen Cyrano de Bergerac tonight? Permit me. Ragno, the talented poet. Sir? Oh, you embarrass me. And chief support of modern poetry. I do what I can. The poets gather in my shop. <laughs> he pays them in pastry for their verses. For every decent ode, I give a raspberry tart. For each ballad, a loaf of bread. Food for thought, as they say. And your <laughs> theater tickets tonight? Six cream puffs and four fruit pies. But Cyrano isn't here. I can't believe it. Why not? Why? That actor, Montfleury, he's playing here tonight. What's that to Cyrano? Haven't you heard? Bergerac hates him so much that he's forbidden him to show his face on any stage for a month. So? Montfleury has the title role tonight. So he does, unfortunately. <laughs> but what of it? <laughs> That's what I came to see. This Cyrano, who is he? The best friend and the bravest soul alive. The glory of the Gascon Guards is but a reflection of Cyrano. Poet, swordsman, musician, philosopher. With a face that is absolutely unique. In pride unmatched. A strutting chanticleer. A swashbuckler from an epic poem. The self-appointed conscience of the world whose wit may cut as deeply as his sword. His hat with one white plume, what a nash. And under it, most singular of all, a nose unparalleled in size and scope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my friend. Oh, we'll see you later. Look quick. There she is. A name. A name. A name. Madeleine Robin, called Roxanne. Refined, intellectual, no. unmarried. Yes. Orphan. Distant cousin to Cyrano, whom we spoke just now. The man. Who's the man? Oh, that man. De Guiche. A count. In love with her, but already married to the niece of Cardinal Richelieu. So he has devised for Roxanne a marriage of convenience. His convenience to a fellow named Valvere. Now, Valvere is an accommodating man. He'll be a sort of part time husband who will step discreetly aside whenever de Guiche wants to exercise his authority, shall we say? Roxanne says no to all of this, but de Guiche is persistent and powerful. Mm. I've written a little song about his game. A naughty little song, make him furious. I'll sing it for you, listen. Wait. Someone is looking at you. Roxanne. 
then I'll be leaving for some place where my singing is appreciated. Also, I'm thirsty. No sign of Cyrano anywhere. Wait, Le Bray, wait and see. This man de Guiche. What ostentation. Hold and calculating, certain to succeed. Come, let us make our bow. We shall be none the worse for it, I assure you. <clears throat> Beautiful ribbons, Count. All oh, Paris has heard of your triumphs against the Spaniards. Uh, shall we take our places? Come, Valver. Valver, my glove. I'll throw it in his face. Who are you? <laughs> Quite a crush here tonight. We're practically in one another's pockets. I was looking for my glove. And you found a hand. No, no, don't turn me in. Let me go, and I'll tell you a secret. What secret? Your drunken poet friend, Linier. The one who was here just now. What about him? He's as good as dead. <laughs> yes, an ambush. One of his songs offended a very powerful man. And now 100 men will be waiting for him tonight. 100 men? Yes. And I should know I'm one of them. <laughs> Who's behind this? Uh, that is a professional secret. Well, where will they be? Uh, at the Port de uh, by the Harbor Bridge, on his way home. Now you warn him. Save his life. In the name of God, how will I find him? Make the rounds of the taverns. Leave a message in each one. A warning. God, what swine. A hundred men against poor little Inier. I must warn him. But how? How can I leave her here with him? I must save Linier. <laughs> Cyrano is not here, then. Thrice happy he who hides from pomp and power. In sylvan shade or solitary bower. <laughs> Where balmy zephyrs Fan his burning cheeks. And blow him off the stage for four whole weeks. Ahem. Fools, mm. leave the stage at once. Now, now, now. Oh. You disobey me? Thrice happy he who off hides. the stage. Uh, 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 Where balmy zephyrs fan his burning cheeks. That swine, if you dare breathe one balmy zephyr more, I'll... Ban your cheeks for you! You there? Then I enter. Center. To carve a large Italian sausage. Sir, when you insult me, you insult the muse. Sir, if the muse who never knew your name had the misfortune to see your face. Play -play! One more word of that same song, and I destroy you all. Who are you, Samson? Precisely. Will you lend me your jawbone? <laughs> Will all those who wish to die please raise their hands? Approach, young heroes. Who will head the list? You, sir? No? <laughs> you. No? Not one volunteer, not one finger. Very well, then I proceed. I would have the theater purged of this carbuncle. Mm -hmm. Attend to me, full moon. I have banned you from the sky for one full month. I will clap my hands three times thus. <laughs> By the third clap, you will eclipse yourself. Ready? <laughs> One, stay! stay. Oh, have you to hate our dear Montfleury? Oh, my dear friend, two reasons. Either one conclusive. Primo, a lamentable actor who brays his verse and belches his tragedy and spews up bleh, like a sewer lines that ought to soar on their own wings. Secundo, 
Well, that is a personal matter. But you close the play. Are we to miss our entertainment simply because My you dear man, the poetry in that play is criminal. By arresting it, I've merely done poetic justice. <laughs> really? What about the money? I shall have to give it all back now. My actors have to be paid. Oh, my old friends, I do not wish to rend the mantle of the muse. Here! Catch, idiot! Oh. Monsieur, you are hereby authorized to close this play every night under the same terms. <laughs> a scandal! This is a scandal! Montfleury, the great Montfleury, he has a very powerful patron, you know. Who is yours? No one. No one? No patron? I said no one. What? No great lord to protect you with his name? I have told you twice, must I repeat? No, sir, no patron. But a patroness? Well, you'll have to leave Paris, of course. Really? Why? His patron has a very long arm. Mine is longer by three feet of steel. Oh, surely you don't dream of daring to... I do dream of but daring. You... you may go. Or tell me, sir, why are you staring at my nose? No. Does it I, astonish I, I, you? I, 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 you misunderstand It disgusts me. you, then. Dear sir. Does color I, nauseate you? By, by no means. Is it obscene? Well, not in the least. Or perhaps you find it just a trifle large. Oh, no, 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 no. A, a, a small. Very small. Minuscule, really. What? Minuscule, my nose? Oh, God. Magnificent, my nose. You pug, you knob, you button face. Know that I glory in this nose of mine. For a great nose indicates a great man, wise, courageous, virile, witty, proud, kind. All the virtues you so sadly lack. In truth, so vacuous is your countenance, I cannot distinguish it from your back. <laughs> this fellow grows tiresome. He's fond of blowing his trumpet. Will no one interfere? Observe. I myself will proceed to put him in his place. <laughs> Ah, sir, ah, uh, your, your nose is rather large. Yes? Yes? Is that all? Well, of course, sir. Oh, no, dear sir, why waste such an opportunity for eloquence? Consider all the things you might have said. For example, thus, aggressive. Sir, if that nose are mine, I'd have it amputated on the spot. <laughs> Kindly, oh. You love the little birds so much that when they come to sing, you give them this to perch upon. <laughs> Humorous, sir. <laughs> when you smoke, <laughs> the neighbors must suppose your chimney is on fire. <laughs> Cautious, careful when you turn your head, you might club me. <laughs> Pedantic. Does not Aristophanes mention a mythological monster called the hippo dragano camelopantos? Surely we have here the original. <laughs> Familiar, hey, do you mind if I hang my hat on it? Eloquent, when it blows, the typhoon howls. When it bleeds, the Red Sea. <laughs> <laughs> Enterprising, stripe it, you've got a barber's pole. Inquisitive, what do they call this monument? Respectful, sir, I recognize in you a man of prominence. Rustic. You call that a nose? What kind of fool you think I be? That ain't no nose. That there's a new kind of bulbous cucumber. <laughs> Military, the enemy is charging. Fire your cannon. Practical, at least it keeps your feet dry in the rain. Or parodying Faustus in the play. Is this the nose that launched a thousand ships and matched the topless towers of Ilium? These, my dear sir. Uh, things you might have said had you some tinge of letters or of wit to color your discourse. But wit not so, you never had an atom. And of letters, you need but three to write you down. A.S. S. Come, ah! 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 this elegance from a non-entity, a clown, who appears in public with no buckles on his shoes, no ribbons, or even a pair of gloves. I carry my adornments on my soul. I do not dress up like a popinjay. You have no gloves. Yes, I have no gloves. A pity, too. I had one, the last of an old pair. A certain nobleman offered me an impertinence. I left it in his face. Dolt, bumpkin, fool, insolent puppy, jabonol. Oh, yes, and I, Cyrano, Savagnier, Hercule de Bergerac. Good day. <laughs> you are a fake. Ooh, what's the matter? Ooh, I must do something to relieve this stitch in my side. 
Ah. So be it. You shall fall exquisitely. Poet. Huh. Correct at last, a poet. So while we fence, I will make you a ballad extempore. A ballad? Yes, you know what the ballad is. I... The ballad sir, consists of three eight-line stanzas with the refrain of four lines at the end. Oh, come. I will make one while we fight. And at the end of the refrain, thrust home. You will? I will. Ballad of the duel at the Hotel de Bourgogne. But... Between de Bergerac and the Cretan. What's that? The title, you know what that is? Wait! Let me choose my rhyme, hey? Let me... Never mind. Here we go! Oh. Lightly I toss my hat away. Languidly from off my arm let fall the cloak that covers my bright array. <laughs> then up sword <coughs> and to work eat with all. <laughs> a Lancelot in his lady's hall, a Spartacus at the Hippodrome. I dally a while with you, dear Jackal, and as I end the refrain, thrust home. <laughs> Where shall I skewer my peacock? Eh, nay, better for you to have shown this brawl there in the heart under your ribbons, gay, in the belly, under your silken shawl. How the steel rings musical. Mark my point. <laughs> Ready to drive you back to the wall. And when I end the refrain, thrust home. Ah. Oh, for a rhyme. Ah. You cringe, you crawl. Da, 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 da. Can, can I parry your last to say? Show me the turn of a hand for stall. Life with its honey, death with its gall. Show me the turn of my fancy roam, free for a time, till the rhymes recall and. As I end the refrain, thrust home. Oh. Refrain! Prince, pray God who is Lord of all. Pardon your soul for your time has come. Uh. Beat fast, when you will plan to sprawl. When I end the refrain, thrust home! Oh. <laughs> Will you dine with us? I? No. Oh, you do not dine. Thank you, no. Why not? Because... Because I have no money. But what about the purse of gold? Farewell, my monthly stipend. And for the rest of the month? I have nothing. What a fool. But what a gesture. Oh, pardon, monsieur. You should not go hungry. I have plenty here, please. Oh, no, my child. Gascon pride forbids me to accept anything. But since your offer comes from true kindness, and since I may give you offense if I refuse, I will take uh, a grape. Oh. Uh, one. A uh, glass of water. Uh -uh. Clear. And half a macaroon. Ridiculous. Nothing more. Yes. Your hand to kiss. Thank you, sir. Good night. <sighs> I am famished. Dinner, drink, dessert. Your manner is excessive, my friend. You take everything to extremes. No man of senses behaves the way you do. Ah. Look at all the enemies you have made. Mm. Oh, delicious. Where is all this leading you? What's the purpose in it? One purpose always. 
to make myself in all things admirable. Yes, but what has this got to do with Montfleury? Uh, What's the real reason you hate him? That Silenus, that bloated lecher who cannot hold his belly in his arms. I've hated him ever since the day he dared smile upon... The day he dared touch the hand of... Oh, my friend, I seem to see over a delicate flower a fat slug crawling. What? Is it possible? For me to love? Yes. I love. Can you tell me? Whom I love? Oh, think a moment. Think of me with this nose of mine that marches on before me by a quarter of an hour. Me, whom the plainest woman would despise. Whom, whom should I love? Of course. Must be the woman in the world most beautiful. <laughs> most beautiful. Most beautiful. Dangerous. Mortally. Without meaning to be. Exquisite beyond imagining. Not Venus herself floating in her shell over the Mediterranean blue. Or the goddess Diana shimmering through deep blossoming woods. Are so divine as she when she mounts her chair brushes her hand across her forehead and is carried abroad through the streets of Paris. Ah, that makes everything perfectly clear. Your cousin, Roxanne. Roxanne. If you love her, tell her so. Oh, my own friend, look at me. Look at me. Oh, now and then I may grow tender-hearted walking alone in the blue cool of evening through some garden fresh with flowers after the benediction of the rain. My poor big devil of a nose snuffs up April, and so I follow with my eye when a boy with a girl on his arm passes a patch of silver, and somehow I, I feel... Uh, I wish I had a woman, too, walking with little steps beside me under the moon. I forget. I dream. And then I see the shadow of my profile on the wall. My friend. No, my friend, I have my bitter days, knowing myself so ugly, so alone. Sometimes I weep. Oh, no, never. Be too grotesque. Tears running all the way down this drain pipe. But, but love's no more than chance. No, I love Cleopatra. Do I look like Mark Antony? But your brilliance, your genius. Why, that lovely little girl who offered you dinner just now. Her eyes didn't avoid you. Couldn't you see how dazzled she was by your performance here today? It's true. And Roxanne herself. I saw her watching you fight. Her lips parted. Her hand at her breast. And she was so pale. Pale? She was pale? I saw it. You covered yourself with glory in her eyes, my friend. Speak to her. Speak to her. From behind this? And she not laugh? Strange. But that's the one thing in all this world I fear. Monsieur! Monsieur, there's a lady asking to see you. Yes, yes, I wish to speak with Miss... Uh, 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 no, 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 no. I wish to speak with... Uh, Monsieur de Bergerac. With me? Yes, yes, I have a... Uh, I mean, she was uh, in the... Uh, 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 Oh, dear. I have a message uh, for you. For me? Yes, yes, yes. yes your, your, your good cousin, Roxanne, Roxanne, desires to speak with you privately. With me? Yes, yes. yes. She, has, uh, she has certain, uh, oh, my, yes, yes, things to discuss with you. Hmm? Mon dieu. Mm, oh, dieu. Oh, yeah. May we arrange to meet with you uh, after mass tomorrow morning? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Where? Yes. Yes. Oh, where? Where? <laughs> a place, Monsieur. A place. Yes. I, I, I'm. 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 I'm thinking. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking. Uh, a place. Uh, Ragno. Ragno. The the pastry shop. The, the pastry shop. The address. The address. Yes. Oh, oh, the address. Uh, uh, it's near the cathedral. Oh, in the cathedral. Oh, seven o'clock, monsieur. I'll be there. Very good, he'll be there. Me. 
She wants to see me, no matter why. She knows I exist. Oh, now you are going to be happy. Oh, now I'm going to be a storm, a flame. I shall fight whole armies all at once. I have ten arms, a hundred hearts. I feel too strong to war with mortals. Bring me giants! What is it? They're waiting. Who is waiting? A hundred men at the harbor bridge of the port to Nell. What men? Sent by a very powerful man. What man? I can't get home except across that bridge, Cyrano. But why does he hate you so? Oh, it's all here. Written all here. A hundred against one. The one, that's me. All because of a song I wrote. My best song. Ah, yes. They don't like his writing, so now they intimidate him. Intimidate? They want to kill me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. A hundred men, did you say? Is that all? My friend, you are going home tonight. I will bring you there myself. Give him that lantern. Come along, all of you. I'll give you a show. Against a hundred men? Yes, those are the odds this day of day, this night of nights. Come on, everyone. Follow me to the bridge in all your trumpery. Put on your masks and your feathers. Fly ribbons for banners. Beat tambourines for marching drums. And let no man help me. Do you hear? No one. I must fight alone. Myself alone. Carried on wings of... Porter! The doors! Look! Look! Paris dreams. Nocturnal. Nebulous with blue moonbeams strung from street to street, nature's own setting for the scene we play. And yonder, behind her veil of mist, the Seine, like a mysterious and magic mirror, shimmers. And you shall see what you shall see. Play, musicians, play! Over the coppers of my kitchen flows the frosted silver dawn. <coughs> ah, ah, the oven calls. Jellied fruits, puff pastry, cream custard, very creamy. Strawberry tart, a little too tart. Cakes and confections, charming. Bread, rolls, bravo. <laughs> oh, my dainty little wife. Paper bags. Thank you. Heavens, my manuscripts, my verses, torn and butchered and glued to make paper bags. <laughs> At least this way they're of some use. Dragon, you would stifle the nightingale in his song. Nightingales don't pay bills. What a way to use poetry. I can't think of a better one. I shudder to think what you would do with prose. <laughs> Rango, Rango. Good morning. Do you have the time? Six o'clock. Oh, good. I have about an hour. Congratulations. For what? On your victory. Victory? At the theater. Oh, oh that. Dueling in rhyme. Oh, nothing. Then, as I end the refrain, thrust home. Then, as I end the refrain, God, what a line. Then, as I end the refrain. The time, the time, the time. Five past six. Thrust home. Yeah. Your hand. What have you done? My hand? Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, Ragno, I'm, I'm expecting. Someone, will you leave us alone when the, when the time comes? But my poets will be here in a moment. No, no, please, take them in there when I, when I give you the sign. Uh, Ragno, uh, the time now. Six after six. Uh, uh, Ragno, uh, uh, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you have a, a, a pen? An eagle's feather. Oh, my lovely. Good morning. Who is that? My wife's friend. A mighty warrior, according to him. I see. Madame, uh, this, uh, this musketeer, he, uh, he flirts with you? 
If any man offends my virtue, I know what to do. Look at him, once. I do not find those eyes of yours unconquerable. Ragnar was my friend. I allow no one. Do you hear no one to use him badly? No! I will simply write it, fold it, leave it for her and go. I'm a coward. I dare not speak one word of love to her. Not the time. Seven after six. Not one word of all the thousands I have locked up in here. I will write to her. Which one? Which one? Of the hundreds of letters I have written over and over again in my heart. My only. Seven dead men scarred and gory scattered all over the stones. Your lips. They say one man alone fought with a hundred and made them flee. I grow faint with fear. He must have been the very devil. Like an angel you appear. Ragnar, read us your recipe in rhyme. Oh, I a recipe for almond cake. Beat your eggs so very light. Separating yolk from white. Never dared hope. Fold in flour, add your milk, blend until it's smooth as silk. No one more beautiful. When the batter's creamy fluff, sprinkle sugar, just enough. The tenderest feelings in me. Add chopped almonds to the dough and bake. For sweet, sweet cake, frog, no. The happiest of men. Delicious. Oh, Delicious. Your friend who loves you. Oh, my dear. Now, now. Right now, right now. Now, now. Bring your poetry inside. Courage, Cyrano. Courage. Madame, madame, madame. Have you um, uh, a good uh, digestion? Uh, uh, wonderful. Uh, do you like uh, cream puffs? Oh, uh, uh, only with whipped cream. Good. Here are uh, six embosomed in a poem by uh, Bon Seurat. Oh, Monsieur de Pinchot. And, and, and this, oh. um, this ode of Chaplin looks deep enough to hold one jelly roll. <laughs> do you like nature? Oh, oh, mad about it. <laughs> then go out and eat these under the trees. Oh, but, but, and do not return but, until I, you finish them. But I, oh, dear. Blessed be the hour, above all others, when you remembered to remember me. And, and came to tell me what? First, cousin, let me thank you. That man, that creature that you humbled with your sword yesterday, his patron, one Monsieur de Guiche, would have forced that man upon me for a husband. Thank you for saving me from that scoundrel. Oh, I understand. So much the better. I, 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 I fought then not for my big nose, but for your bright eyes. And secondly... Oh, I don't quite dare tell you. Do you remember...
remember when we were children together? You were like a big brother to me. Do you remember playing by the pond in the old garden down there? Do I remember? You, 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 you came to Bergerac every summer. You used to make swords out of bulrushes. Yes, and you used uh, corn silk to make golden hair for your dolls. Those green plums. Yeah, and those black mulberries. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, you always did everything I asked. Yes, yes, yes. In, in those days, you used to want to be called Madeleine. Oh, was I pretty? Oh, you... You, you were not too plain. <laughs> Sometimes, when you would hurt your hand, you would come running to me and I would play your mother and I would say in a very grown-up voice, Don't tell me what you have been doing to yourself. Let me see. Oh. <gasps> Wait. I said, let me see. Oh, still at your age. How did you all do that? Playing with the big boys down at the Fort de Nell. Oh, you tell me how many you played with while I washed this blood away. Oh, not, not quite a hundred. <gasps> tell me. No, no, you, you tell me what you were going to tell me if you dared. Oh, yes. I think I can now. Oh, it seems like old times telling secrets to each other. Oh, yes, I can. Listen, I love someone. Someone who does not know. Oh? At least, not yet. Ah. But he will know soon. Uh -huh. A big boy who loves me, too. But he is shy, keeps his distance, and says not a word. Oh, your hand is so feverish. <laughs> I know he wants to speak to me. Oh? Yes. There. Is that better? <gasps> and just imagine. This is a secret. He is a member of your regiment. Oh. In fact, he's in your company. Oh, oh his face, it, it shines with wit and intelligence. He's proud, brave, young, noble, and so beautiful. Beautiful? Why, what's the matter? Oh, nothing, uh, nothing. Uh, it's my hand. Well, I love him. That's all. Oh, and I've never seen him anywhere except the theater. Do you mean you've never spoken to him? Only with my eyes. Then how do you know he loves you? Well, people talk about people. I hear things. And I know. You say, uh, he say he's in the guard, uh, his name? Christian de Nouvellet. But there is no, uh, there is no cadet by that name. Oh, he only joined this morning. So soon. So soon we lose our hearts. But my dear child. I have eaten all the pastry. Good. Go out and read the poetry. <laughs> but you, so cultivated, so sheltered, so refined, who love music, art, wit, poetry, exquisite manners, what if he's a simpleton, a dolt? Oh, no. His head is like a golden Grecian god. Yes, well, his mind may be as curly as his hair. Not with such eyes. I read his soul in them. Our souls are written in our eyes, but what if he's a bungler? An idiot when it comes to love. Then I shall die. Are you satisfied? And you came to tell me? I, I don't uh, quite understand, mademoiselle, why, why you are confiding this to me. Because I'm terrified. They say that most of the men in your company are Gascons, and that they... Pick a fight with any newcomer who is not a pure Gascon. Is that what you've heard? Yes. Stories of bloody fights and terrible wounds. I am so afraid for Christian. Not without reason. What if he were scarred or disfigured? I could not bear it. I hoped that you might... Well, yesterday, you were so brave, so invincible against all those brutes. Everyone fears you. I hoped that you might not... I see. I see. Yes. Yes, I'll protect your little cadet for you. Oh, I knew you would. I've always had such tender affection for you. Yes. You will be his friend. Yes, I will be his friend. And keep him safe from fights and duels. Yes, I will keep him safe from fights and duels. <laughs> I knew I was right to like you so much. And now I must go. 
Oh, but you never told me of your battle last night. It must have been incredible. You must have him write and tell me all about it. Yes. A hundred men against one. Well, goodbye. I love you so. Yes. Now, he must write to me. And you must promise to tell me the whole story someday. A hundred men. What courage. Come in. Yes. Here he is, our hero. The whole company is here. There's a huge crowd. The whole city knows of your triumph. Everyone wants to see you. A huge crowd. Monsieur, Monsieur, I have to love you. I've come to express my admiration for your heroism. The story would have been incredible were it not for several witnesses. Your name is known already as a soldier. You are a member of the Gascon Guard, are you not? Yes, the Gascons! Yes. Gascon! I understand your bravery as a fighter is matched by your brilliance as a poet. Since poets have become quite fashionable, I invite you to join my following. Sir, I do not follow anyone. Your duel in verse yesterday amused me. As you know, Cardinal Richelieu is my uncle. Perhaps I can help you there. Yes? I suppose you've written a play? I have, I have, a tragedy. They all have. Now's your chance. He could produce your play. Why not take it to him? The Cardinal himself is a playwright. Let him rewrite a few lines here and there. He'll approve the rest. Impossible. My blood curdles at the thought of anyone altering a comma. But when he likes a thing, he pays well. Not so well as I. When I have made a line that sings, I pay myself a hundred times. You are proud, my friend. You have observed that, have you? Cyrano! See here! Look what we found on the harbor bridge. Plumes of the birds that you put to flight. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever hired those hundred rogues must be an angry man today. Who was it, Count? Do you know? It was I who hired them. For the type of work a nobleman does not soil his hands with. Punishing a drunken and troublesome poet. What should we do with them? Yes! Sir, would you be good enough to return these to your friends? Have you ever read Don Quixote? I have. I find myself the hero. Read once more the chapter of the windmills. Chapter 13. Remember, if you fight with windmills, their huge arms may swing round and cast you down into the mud. Or up among the stars. This time you've outdone yourself. You destroy every chance that comes your way. And now you've gone too far. Stop trying to be the three musketeers all at once. For God's sake, soften your pride a little and learn to compromise. What would you have me do? Seek for the patronage of some great man? Like ivy on a tree, crawl upward where I cannot stand alone? No, thank you. Dedicate my verse to financiers? Be a sycophant in the vile hope of teasing out a smile on a cold face? No, thank you. Eat toad for breakfast every morning? Make my knees callous and cultivate a supple spine. Wear out my belly, groveling in the dust. No, thank you. Calculate, scheme, be afraid. 
try to insinuate my name into the columns, love more to make a visit than a poem, repay with tons of flattery one ounce of favor, use the fire God gave me here to burn incense at the shrines of mediocrity? No, thank you. No, I thank you. And again, I thank you. But to laugh, to sing, to dream, to walk in my own way with my panache, to wear my pride like a man, to cock my hat when I choose, at a word to fight or write, and never make a line I have not heard in my own heart. Yet with modesty to say, my soul be content with blossoms, with buds, with weeds, but pick them in a garden you may call your own. So if by chance I win a victory or two, no rendering to Caesar will I do. I am too proud to be a parasite. And if my nature wants the seed that grows to heaven like a towering pine, or like an oak embracing multitudes, I stand not high, it may be, but at least I stand alone. Shout this to all the world, my friend. Then whisper the truth to me. She loves you not. Well, 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 a country bumpkin from the north. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen well, Monsieur de Nouviette, and try with your dim brain to understand. With us, there is one subject not discussed, a certain object never to be named. Those who defy this rule and speak the word, they vanish, never to be seen again. I trust we've made the situation clear. Mention that word once, and you answer to Cyrano. He has exterminated several whose voices had a slightly... Nasal twang. One word, one <laughs> sniff, one accidental sneeze, and you have signed your death certificate. Captain? Sir. Sir. May I ask the proper course of action when southern braggarts have overstepped their bounds? Prove that a northerner can match their courage. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir! <laughs> I marched on, all alone to meet those devils. Overhead, the moon hung like a giant silver watch on the fob of heaven. Suddenly, mysteriously, an angel's hand put it into a pocket of cloud, and night came down. No lamps in those back streets. More yes, it was so dark. You could not see beyond your nose. Yep. Who is that? man over there a new recruit only arrived this morning a recruit called christian de nouviette <laughs> oh oh yes of course i see no just As I was saying, it grew dark. <laughs> Could not see your hand in front of your face. I marched on, knowing I was risking my life for the sake of a poor old souse who wrote bawdy songs whenever he took a nose full. A notion for him I was offending a great man, one powerful enough to make me pay... Through the nose. The, the piper. Uh, after, 
After all, I thought, why am I putting in my... No. Oh! After all, the quarrels aren't mine, but since I'm here, I might as well go through with it. Come, Gascon, I told myself, do your duty. Suddenly, a sword flashed in the dark. I caught it right on the nose, on my blade. Before I knew it, there I was. Nose to nose. Sword to sword. Six, ten, twelve men, how many there were. Heaven only. Nose! Contra sangre! I skewered two, disarmed a third, and handed the fourth. A nosegay? Out of here, all of you! Get out! <laughs> To my arms. Sir? You're a brave man. Yes, well. Very brave. I'm glad to see that. Come. I'm what? Do you not know? I am her brother. Come. Whose? Hers, hers, Roxanne. You? Her brother? Well, a brotherly cousin, almost her brother. And uh, has she told you about everything? Me? Does she love me? Maybe. Oh, <laughs> sir, I, I, I'm overwhelmed with, 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 with the honor. Oh, of, yes, uh, yes, I, this I, is rather sudden. You, uh, uh, if you knew how much I truly admired yes, you, you'd know yes, I... Yes, 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 all those noses. Uh, please, I take them all back. Yes. It's true. You are a handsome man. Roxanne expects a letter this evening. Not from me. Of course, why not? Because if I write her a letter, she'll never want to see me again. Why? I'm such a fool, I could die of shame. Oh, no one who calls himself a fool is, is really a fool. Besides, <laughs> Christian, you did not attack me like a fool. Words come easily in a quarrel. I can talk well enough to a man, but with a woman it's different. I'm speechless, paralyzed. I take one look in their eyes and start to talk, Oh, then I turn away in despair. But what if what if you stay? Gave gave voice to your feelings. No, I'm one of those men who will never be able to woo a woman with words. Strange. Now that I think of it, I could woo a woman with words. Oh, if only I had words to say what I have here. If only. I were handsome. And Roxanne is so elegant, so refined. One rough word from me and the illusion would be shattered. I need a body to speak for my soul. I need eloquence, and I have none. Borrow mine. What? Borrow my eloquence. And you lend me your handsome young face. Together, we two will make one hero of romance. What do you mean? Would you dare repeat to her words I would give you day by day? You mean you would I tell mean me... I Roxanne shall have no disillusionment. Let this soul of mine fly from me and rest beneath your doublet for a while. So, there it is. Yeah, but, Cyrano, but Christian, I... why not? It frightens me. I know, I know. You fear that when you are alone with her, you will speak and ruin everything. But if my words come from your lips, she will love you even more than she does now. Your eyes, they're burning. Will you? Will you? Would it mean so much to you? It, it, it would... It, it, it would amuse me. Oh, 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 oh what, what, a, what a situation. Any, any poet would be tempted. We, we two completing each other. You walking in the light, I in the shadows. Me making you eloquent, you making me handsome. But what about the letter? I'll never be able to write about it. The letter. It. The letter is already written. Here it is. What's this? Here it is, all but the signature. I can't send a letter. I haven't even written. You can send it as it is. Don't worry, it's a masterpiece. Why did you write it? always have a letter in my pocket to some imaginary love. Here, here, take it. You'll, you, you'll find it all the more eloquent being insincere. But written at random, can it fit Roxanne? Like her own glove. Oh, Cyrano. My son, have faith in the love of women for themselves. Roxanne will know this letter for her own. My friend. Christian, come. <laughs> my friend. <laughs> Well, well, well. Here's our devil Christianized. Slap one nostril, he turns the other. Never again need we fear to speak of his nose. <laughs>
la 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 la. Uh, F natural, F natural, idiot. Oh, but I'm sure that I'm a musician, infant, a pupil of Gazendi. Now. I will praise your lilies fair. Is it you, Santa? But long to love your roses. Did you train that virtuoso? I won him on a bet. <laughs> From Dasu C. We were debating a fine point of grammar when, pointing to this young nightingale, he said, No, but I know. I'll wager you a day of music. Well, of course, he lost. And so, <laughs> until tomorrow, this young nightingale is mine. I, I shall be right down. Wait. Here. Go and play a minuet for the actor, Montfleury. Play off key and tell him I sent you. My dear confidant. Yes, here I am, as usual, to inquire after the progress of our friend, uh, your friend, uh, with the great soul. Oh, he is so beautiful and so brilliant, and I love him. You find Christian so brilliant? Even more than you. I'm so glad. <laughs> oh, no man ever expressed himself more eloquently. Oh, such lovely speeches. Sometimes he stops, as if he didn't know what he was going to say next. And then suddenly it bursts from him and he says something absolutely... Oh. Really? Oh, you think any man who has a handsome face must be a fool. He talks well about... Everything. About matters of the heart? Oh, he does not talk. He rhapsodizes, dreams. And he writes well. Oh, wonderfully. Listen, are these words not the very soul of tenderness? There is no more to say. Only believe that unto you my whole heart gives one cry, and writing writes down more than you receive, sending you kisses from my fingertips. Oh, lady, please, read my letter with your lips. Yes. Mm. Oh, those, those last lines, he overwrites. Oh, listen to this. You know them all by heart? Every one. How flattering. He is a master. Oh, come. Yes, a master. All right, all right, if you insist. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 by the way, uh, when the uh, master comes tonight, what will you have him talk about? You always know beforehand. Tonight, about everything. I shall say, speak to me of love in your own words. Improvise, rhapsodize. Say everything that is in your heart. Oh! <laughs> De Guiche! Monsieur de Guiche just turned into our street. Quickly, Monsieur de Bergerac. You must come inside. Oh, his, his love grows more violent for me every day. He terrifies me. He mustn't suspect I have any visitors. He would go mad with jealousy. You must go inside, please. No, no, I, I must, please, oh, oh, cousin, please. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. I'm so sorry, we were just returning. I've only come to say farewell. You're leaving Paris? Tonight, for the front. We have orders to besiege Arras. Roxana, I'm desolate. When will I see you again? This is our last night together. I ask for but a few moments with you. Can you not see how I long for you? Or does my departure leave you cold? Oh, no. Not cold. Do you know I've been made a colonel? Bravo. Of the Gascon Guard. The Guard? Yes. His regiment, your cousin, the mighty man of words. On the battlefield, we may have a chance to settle our accounts at last. Are you sure the Guards have been ordered to the front? Under my command. What is job? To the war, perhaps never. What is it? When a woman cares. Oh, can't you see? So you do care for me. I knew it. Uh, but my cousin, you say in battle you plan to take revenge on him. Do you really mean that? Why? Would you care? Not about him. Do you see him? Now and then. But your plan, how will you avenge yourself on him? By ordering him into danger, nothing would delight him more. There is 
My dear Antoine, a better way. A better way? Of course. Leave him behind, here with his young cadets. Leave them all behind to cool their heels while the rest of the army goes on to glory. If you truly hate Cyrano, that is the way to torture him. <laughs> <laughs> woman. Woman. Who but a woman could have conceived of such sweet revenge? <laughs> so you do love me, Roxanne, making my enemies your own and hating them. I see in that a sign of love, Roxanne. Perhaps it is a sign of love. It shall be done, my dear. Exquisite. So, you play your little games too, do you? <laughs> when they are needed. You. I am mad over you. Listen. My orders say that I must leave tonight. But how can I leave now that I know how you feel? I'll stay. Just for tonight. The Capuchin monks have their monastery near here. One mention of my uncle's name and the doors will be open for me. The monks can hide me. Later, when it is safe, I will come to you. We will be alone. I must have you tonight. Woman, you drive me wild. But what of your war, your, your, your honor, your duty? You're nothing, my angel. I shall return. Say yes. Say yes. Oh, no. You must. Do not deny me. I ought not to let you. For me, Antoine, you must always do what is noble. But your love for me is so strong that you will do as I ask. For my love, I will do anything. Oh. Well. Until later, then. For <laughs> my love, I will do anything to work I never dreamed I could dissemble so shamelessly. Not a word to anyone, especially Cyrano. He mustn't know I stole his chance to be a hero. <gasps> Chris Charles. He'll be here any minute. I must try and recover myself. Oh, oh cousin, cousin, come quickly. Chris Charles will be here any minute. Please yes. tell him to wait. Chris John, here. No time to lose. She wants you to improvise. I will give you an approach. I will give it to you once. No. What? No, I said no. I've had enough. Your approach, your words, your letters, it's all from you. You're turning my love into a charade. At first it was a game, but now she loves me. I'm not afraid anymore. Tonight, I speak for myself. What lunacy is this? I will. I'm not as big a fool as you think. You shall see. Besides, I have learned a lot from you, my friend. Really? I know enough now to do it on my own. Really? By God, I know enough to take a woman into my arms on my own. Here's your chance. Don't go. No, no, you're on your own. What a heavenly evening. The air is so fragrant. Uh, come. Let us sit here alone in the twilight. Here. And speak to me of love. I... love you. Yes. <laughs> now, speak to me of your love. I love you. No, be eloquent. Improvise. Let me hear a rhapsody. I love you so. Go on. I should be so <laughs> happy if you would love me too, Roxanne. 
Roxanne, say that you love me too. I ask for wine and you give me plain water. Discourse upon the manner of your love. How do you love me? <laughs> Very much. Tell me how you feel. Your throat. If only I might kiss it. Christian! I love you so very much. Again? Uh, no, uh, not again. I do not love you. Oh. I adore you. Oh. I know I'm talking like a fool. Yes. And it displeases me as much as if you had grown ugly. I gather your dreams together into words. I love. I know. You love me. Adieu. Roxanne. Oh. Wait. Congratulations. Help me. Who, I? I cannot live without her love. Teach me now, this minute. How the devil am I going to teach you now, this minute? I shall die. Quiet. I shall die. Shh. It's getting dark. Yes. You don't deserve it, but I'll try. Stand over there. Idiot, there. I will stand under here and whisper you what to say. Try to be brilliant. Ready? I've serenaded Mont Fleury. Oh, go down to the corner and serenade the moon until I send for you. Call her. Roxanne? Louder. Roxanne? Louder, but softer. Roxanne? No, go away. You speak too awkwardly. Please. No, you do not love me anymore. No, no, not anymore. No, no, not anymore. I love you evermore. I love you evermore. And evermore. And evermore. And more. And more. Better. Love. Love grows and struggles. Love grows and struggles. Like an angry child. Like an angry child. Breaking my heart. Breaking my heart. His cradle. His cradle. Better still. But this new babe is dangerous. Why have you not smothered it newborn? I tried. I tried. But I found. But I found as you shall find. As you shall find. This newborn babe. This newborn babe. An infant. An infant. Hercules. Hercules. Good. Strong enough at birth. Strong enough at birth. To strangle those twin serpents. To strangle those twin serpents. Doubt and. Doubt and. Pride. Pride. Very well. Now tell me why you speak so haltingly. Has your imagination gone lame? Your words are hesitant tonight. Why? Through the warm evening air, they, they grope in darkness toward the light of you. My words find no such obstacle. Well, my heart is open wide and welcomes them. So large a target they could hardly miss. My words must fly to your small secret ear, heavy with honey like, like returning bees. Your words fall swiftly down to find their mark. Mine rise up more slowly in the dark. Not so slowly as before. They... They have found the way, all the way to you, and you have welcomed them. Am I so far above you? So far that if you let fall one hard word from that great height, you crush me here below. Then come nearer. Stand upon a bench. No. Then I'll come down. No! And why so great a no? Let me enjoy the one moment I ever... My, my one chance to speak to you unseen. Unseen? Yes, yes. Night making all things dimly beautiful casts one veil on us both. You see only a long cloak in the gloom. I, the lightness of a summer gown. You are all light. I am all shadow. How can you know what this moment means to me? You have never heard till now my own voice speaking. 
Why not? Till now I spoke through through the the sweet intoxication of your eyes over tonight. Oh God, tonight I speak myself. I truly speak to you for the first time. The first time? Yes. Even your voice is not the same. How could it be? I have another voice. My own. Myself. Daring. Please forgive me. I, I, I forget. I, I, this is, this is so like a dream. It's beautiful like a dream, but strange. Why strange? Should it not be strange to be myself with you and have no fear of moving you to laughter? Laughter? Why? Because what am I? What, 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 what is any man to dare to ask for you? What am I? A fool whose timid heart evades with words. Who wants to pluck from the sky the evening star, but stoops instead to gather little flowers. Are they not sweet, those tender little flowers? Oh, these little things, these pretty things, these arrows, hearts and torches, roses, red and violets, blue. Is there no more ever? Must we go on and on, sipping sweet drinks from dainty golden cups, my sweet, we live, we breathe, we hunger, thirst. Oh, come, come away. Let's plunge and drink and drown in love's great river flowing to the sea. But your words... I told my love in pretty rhymes at first to charm your ear and win your sheltered heart. But love hates the game of words. I tell you, dear, there comes one moment once, and God help those who pass that moment by when beauty looks into the soul with grave, clear eyes that see the emptiness and vanity of words. If this be true, when that moment comes for you and me, what words will... All those, all those that blossom in my heart, I'll fling to you a wild array, an avalanche of bloom, oh love. I love beyond breath, beyond reason's reach, beyond love's own height, love's power of loving. Your name is like a shining golden bell hung in my heart. And when I think of you, I tremble. And the bell then swings and rings, rocks on, rocks on along my veins. Rocks on. As, as, as a child, I would, I would look into the sun and blink and see bright circles dance before my eyes. But when I look on your deep, dazzling light, you burn in my heart's mind through darkest night. Yes. This is love. Yes. Love. For love, each time I look on you, some new virtue is born in me, a brave rebirth of life and hope. Do you begin to see, to feel my soul here in the darkness, moving close, embracing you in my most sweet, unreasonable dreams? I dared not hope for this, to say these things to you myself in my own voice. It is my voice that makes you tremble there above me in the moon's soft light. Oh, God, for I can feel you trembling, breathing, trembling. I tremble, and I weep, and I love you. I am yours. You have made me yours. What is death like, I wonder? For tonight I have known all that life can give. I have made you mine. Oh, yes. I, myself. You love me. Yes. But, but, let me ask you one thing more. One kiss. You. A kiss? You ask me for. Yes, yes, I, I, I did ask, but I, 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 I know I asked too much. I beg you to refuse. Why do you say that? Christian, be quiet. Are you talking to yourself? No, no, I, I, I'm angry with myself, so 
Uh, because I, I know I go too far, so I say to myself, Christian, be quiet! My friend! My friend! I am looking for the house of Madeleine Robin. Well, Father, uh, that way, to the right, and then, and then right again, and keep going. Thank you, sir. Win me that kiss. No. Sooner or later, sooner or later. Yes. Of course. Of course. Because you are handsome, and she is beautiful. And since it will be so, I myself must be the cause of what will be. Are you still there? Yes. We were speaking of a kiss. Yes. The word is sweet. Why should we fear the deed? Or have you not already soared beyond mere laughter? From words to smiles, from smiles to sighs, from sighing then to tears? And now one step, one more, the last, from sigh to tear, to kiss. Hush. And what is a kiss when all is done? A vow before the shrine of memory. A new song to an old and simple tune. The ring of one horizon round two souls, binding them together a tenderness in time, a sacrament of blossoms, a rush of wings unseen, a dark and secret fire. Come then, come and gather your sacred blossoms. Go on. Your rush of wings. Go up. Your precious soul. Go. Your tenderness in time. Climb. Climb. Sing my words, my words upon your lips. Oh, there! This way! The Capuchin! Oh. Hello! Uh, hello there! Hello! Uh, uh, Cyrano, is that you? Is, uh, good, good evening, cousin. Is that, uh, is that Christian there with you? Uh, yes, we'll be right down. She lives here! Here. No, you said Roland. No, my son, I said Roban with a B, B, B. L, L, L. B as in buffoon. L is an imbecile, idiot. What is it? A letter, a very important message from a noble lord. De Guiche. De Guiche. Dearest Mademoiselle, the drums are beating and the regiment prepares to march. Secretly, I remain here in the monastery, risking a scandal that would destroy me for a few moments with my love. I will return to you at midnight. You must be alone. I depend on you to see that my return is unobserved. Do not fail me tonight, Roxanne. I will not be denied this time. Antoine de Guiche. But midnight, the, the hour is almost upon us. I, oh, I said things before. I know not what. Oh, my friends, I beg you, do not desert me now. And de Guiche. Well, he's on his way here. If we were wed, not even he could... Married tonight? Oh, yes. Oh, Father, could you perform a marriage ceremony? A marriage? Yes, my child. <laughs> but here and now... I promise you that the monastery will be bountifully rewarded. Very well, my child, as you wish. Are you the... I am the bridegroom. Oh. Blessings on you both. Father, Christian, go inside quickly, please. Cousin, de Guiche will be here any minute. Whatever happens, do not let him in. I understand. Uh, Father, how much time do you think you need? I think a quarter of an hour should do. <laughs> Where is that cursed capuchin? Damn this mask. <laughs> Where did you fall from? The moon. You... The moon, the moon! I, I fell from the moon! The fellow is mad. Where am I? You, uh... What day is it? What time is it? What place? What season? You fell from the moon? I am stunned! My dear sir. Like a bull. 
A bomb. I fell from the moon. Now see here. I say the moon. Very well, if you insist. Raving man. And I am not speaking metaphorically. Uh, pardon? But meteorically. <laughs> I fell for a hundred years, an hour. I cannot tell. I was on yonder luminous ball. <laughs> oh, a mask. Are we in Venice? A lady is waiting for me. A lady? Oh, so this is Paris. Mm. Fellow becomes amusing. You're smiling. Yeah, <laughs> kindly oh, to me. Oh, Paris. Well, 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 well. Uh, you please... Forgive my appearance, please. I arrived on the last thunderbolt. A trifle singed, I'm afraid. I'm covered with stardust. <laughs> and look! Look. A hair from a comet's tail. Yeah. Monsieur! My I... boot! You see my boot? You, you see those marks? I, I was shot at by Orion the Hunter. <laughs> Fortunately, he's a bit starry-eyed. <laughs> but I was helped by the Seven Sisters. They gave me seven drinks of magic milk. Milk? From their milky ways. <laughs> and they gave me some of those. A pocket full of stars. And when I write my book about my heavenly adventures, I will use them for asterisks. That uh, will do. I want to get... I know, I know. You want to know what the moon is like. The but character of its uh, surface, its inhabitants... I any... want no such thing. I want... I know, to I know. Get... You want to know how I got there in the first place. Well, I will tell you how I got there in the first place. It's an invention of my own. Drunk as well as mad. Uh, I discovered not one, not one, but six ways to violate the virgin sky. Six. Six. First... I strip myself stark naked, yeah. and on my nude body, I hang 30 crystal bottles, each one filled with morning dew. The sun appears, draws up the moisture of the morning, and I rise with the dew. Oh, that's one. The second? I chain myself to a metal chest containing isohedron mirrors. They intensify the sun's rays a thousandfold. The chest is filled with hot air. And since hot air rises, I am born aloft. Three. I construct a rocket like a giant steel grasshopper. And using saltpeter for fuel, I am propelled upward by a series of gaseous explosions from its rear. Uh, four. I capture in a huge bag the smoke from the top of a chimney. And since smoke tends to rise from the top of a chimney, I hang on to the bag and am carried away on the wind. Five. According to the legend of Diana, the new moon likes to suck the marrow from the bones of ancient cattle. I paint myself with the marrow from the bones of a dying yak. And then... Voila. And... Lastly, I seat myself on an iron disc. I then throw into the sky a very powerful magnet. The iron disc is drawn to the magnet. I catch the magnet. I throw it again. And again, and again, and again, until I reach the moon. Six. Oh, excellent. Which did you choose? Uh, which did I choose? Which did I choose? Uh, 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 none of them. Uh, none of them. A seventh. Uh, which was? Which was? Uh, which was? Uh, 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 guess. Ah, uh, now, now let me see. You. Have you have you guessed yet? Why, no, I have...
The tide. Ah, the, tide. the tide. After of taking course. a dip in the sea, I lay myself on the beach at the precise moment when the pull of the moon on the tide was at its maximum. I was then lifted upward, head first, of course, since the hair retains moisture. And so I slowly ascended, as upon angels' wings, upward, 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 upward. And suddenly, gook, I felt a shock. And then, and then, and then... Fifteen minutes! Time is up, Your Grace! You are now free, and they are bound in wedlock. That voice and that nose, Cyrano! Cyrano! From this very moment, they are man and wife. My compliments. Your rigmarole would have detained a saint at the gates of heaven. You must not fail to write that book someday. Madam, kindly bid your husband farewell. Your regiment leaves tonight, sir. The Gascon Guard will lead the attack on Arras. You and your comrade will find yourselves under enemy fire night and day. Few of the guards will escape with their lives. Delay one instant at your peril. Report at once! And what? Now you see the nobility you sought in me. You trifled with me, madam, and your insolence is unforgivable. You lost the game because you made the fatal error of underestimating your opponent. You shall have ample time now to regret your mistake. Come, you two! Your lips again. That's enough. Oh, you do not know my pain. I know. Regiment on the march! Take care of him. I'll try. Guard him from danger. I'll do my best. Keep him well and strong. I'll do what I can. And faithful. If possible. And have him write me every single day. Ah, that. I promise you. God again. Are you wounded? No. They keep missing me. It's getting to be a habit with them now. Yes, go right on. Risking your life every night to send a letter. I promised he would write every single day. The boy is pale. Handsome, nonetheless. Half starved. They're all half starved. For a month, they besiege the Spanish forces on a week's rations. Ah, what a war. When the attacking army starves to death. You might steal some food when you cross the Spanish lines. Oh, by the way, there will be news today. If what I saw out there means anything. Tell me. No. I'm not sure. We shall see. You're not starting another letter. No. Finishing one. 
Come along. Wake up. Oh, hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I'm starving. Up with you. Not another step until we eat. No bread, no war. I'm hungry as a wolf. Put on your sheep's clothing. Always the clever answer. Always the answer, yes. At the hand of unworthy to be my foe, let me fall. Steel in my heart and laughter on my lips. Oh, oh you think of nothing but your stomachs. Here comes Monsieur de Guiche. With a collar of lace. And a fancy ribbon tied round his sword. Nonetheless, a Frenchman. And as hungry as we are. Is he to see us looking miserable? Come on, pipes, cards, dice. As for me, I read Descartes. What have we here? Black looks. Come, gentlemen, I am well aware of my unpopularity. I'm called a courtier colonel, am I not? My bravery under fire is well known. Only yesterday I was trapped behind enemy lines, in danger of being captured or shot on sight. I thought quickly, flung off the white scarf that marks my military rank, and escaped among my own force. We returned later and won the day. Oh. Henry of Navarre, being outnumbered, never flung away his white scarf. My device, however, was a success. Possibly, possibly. Of course, an officer does not easily surrender his, uh, his white plume, his panache. Had I been there, your courage and mine differ in this. When your scarf fell, I would have put it on. Boasting, as usual. Boasting? My scarf lies on the riverbank between the lines. A spot swept night and day by enemy artillery. Impossible to reach alive. Really? Here. <laughs> Where did you get that? I managed to get through that enemy artillery early this morning. Lend it to me today. I will lead the first charge. Today you will not need a scarf to mark you for danger, my brave friend. For nearly a month, the Spanish have resisted our siege. There is little hope now for supplies or replacements to reach us in time. The Prince of Spain is aware of our condition and is mounting a counterattack at this moment. His first objective will be this valley. You must defend it to the last with all the courage and spirit for which the Gascon guards are so justly renowned. I'm obliged to tell you that few, very few of you will be left alive when the smoke of the battle is cleared. But in holding this outpost, you provide the time needed for men and provisions to reach us. We are to be cut off from our own forces, then. Precisely. But remember, you fight for the honor of your king and the glory of your country. The general and I will be watching from that hill, and we will report the valor of your sacrifice to all France. How long do we have? You have perhaps an hour. And so... When the attack comes, you will all be so kind as to lay down your lives. Your revenge? I make no pretense of loving you. But since you gentlemen esteem yourselves invincible, the bravest of the brave, why make this a personal matter? I serve my king in choosing as I choose. Allow me to offer you all our thanks. You love to fight a hundred against one. Here is your greatest opportunity. My friends, today we shall add to our six chevrons with their blue and gold a seventh, blood red! Christian, if we are to die here today, never again to see Roxanne, I would like to say farewell to her with all my heart. A letter that she could keep always. I thought of that. I have written your farewell. Let me see. You wish to read it? Of course, why not? Now? Farewell, Roxanne. Because today I die. I know that it will be today, my beloved. And my heart is heavy. For it is filled with so much love for you, still unspoken. Never more shall my eyes drink. What's this? What's what? Look, uh, this little circle. Little circle? Yes. A tear? Oh, yes, so it is. Oh, 
Well, of course, many tears. <laughs> I, 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 a poet, when he writes, is like a man making love. He believes everything he says for the moment. That, that's half the charm of writing. I, I was so moved by my own eloquence when I wrote this. I, I, I wept. You wept? Yes, it is a little thing to die, but never to see her again, that is a great tragedy, and, and I may never... We may never... You may never see her again. Give me that. Halt! Who goes there? In the service of the king! What is it? Lone horse! In the service of the king! Of the king! Fall in! Fall in! Yes, go on! God is merciful. Oh, Why did you come? I've had a very long ride. Oh, you all look so pale. Oh, cousin, I am glad to see you. May I please sit down? Uh, how did you... Thank you. How did you come? Through the Spanish lines, of course. They let you pass? But what did you say? I simply rode along. It was very strange, so quiet. Not an enemy soldier in sight. Oh, one Spanish soldier stopped me, but with all respect to you gentlemen, Spanish gallantry is the finest in the world, so I got through. Oh, Roxanne, you... I what? Cyrano, he is trying to say you must leave this place. At once. But why? Because, because in half an hour... I see. You're going to fight. Yes. Then I shall stay. No. He is my husband. I shall die in his arms. Roxanne. Madam, this post is dangerous. How dangerous? The fact is, de Guiche has ordered us to defend it at all costs. Oh, I see. He wishes to make a widow of me. Well, no matter. I've always been a little mad. I shall stay. Yes! I shall be safe here with my friends. Yes! We three shall triumph over his treachery. Roxanne. No. Roxanne. No, I shall not stir one step. Yes! Yes! Madame de Nouviette. Yes. Please open the hand that holds your kerchief. Why? Our company was in need of a banner. We now have the fairest in all the army. Yes! yes! May I present to you the gentlemen who have the honor of fighting under your banner? Certainly. I must see you before you talk with her. What is it? If Roxanne yes. should talk about your letters, well, do not make the mistake of showing, showing what? surprise. Surprise? I must tell you, you have written to her more often than you think. Have I? I, I was your interpreter. I, I, I wrote to her sometimes you wrote to her without, without my knowing? It, it, it's very simple. Simple? You've been blockaded here for a month. How did you send the letters? I managed to get through the enemy lines before dawn. I see. So all this time I've been writing her. How many times a week? Twice? Three times? Four? More often than that. Every day? Yes, every day. Sometimes twice a day. You were so carried away by your letters that you risked your life every day? Madame Dinovia! Not now, not now, not now! See. Madame, we will fight for you with all our hearts. Oh, thank you, monsieur. Oh, now, Christian. Roxanne, tell me, why did you ride alone over those roads and risk your life to come here? Because your letters. My letters? Yes. It is your own fault if I came into danger. I was drawn here by your passion. Oh, that you have written me so many times, each one more wonderful than the last. All this for a few absurd love letters. Christian, how can you say that? I have loved you ever since that evening when under my window you revealed your soul to me in a strange new voice filled with passion's fire. Now all this time you've been away, your letters made me feel I heard that voice again floating up to me there in the dark. And so at last I knew I had to come and be with you, no matter what the danger. But you... I read them over and over. I grew faint reading them. I knew I belonged to you. Every single line on every page was like a petal fallen from your soul. All the light and fire of a great love 
strong and sweet and true. Strong and sweet and true. You felt that, Roxanne. Oh, that and more. So you came here not because... Oh, Christian, my beloved, I came here to say forgive me, please. Forgive me for being light and vain and loving you only because you were beautiful. Roxana. It is you. You yourself I love now. Your own self. Roxana. I know you must have suffered so to see. See how frivolous I was in loving the mere outward form of you. For though I fell in love not with your soul but with your face and form. Oh, Christian, these things have vanished. I see them no more. It is your inner beauty I adore. Roxanne. Do you doubt your triumph? Oh, Roxanne. I see. You can't believe in me. You think this kind of love... I don't want it. I want to be loved only for... For what every woman sees, I can do better than that. No, it was better before. Christian, I beg you to understand me. The greatness of your soul has made me grow. I have more love to give you than before. I love you now for what you are, not what you seem to be. If you were less handsome, no. less charming, even if you were ugly, I should love you. Is that true? Yes. As true as my life. Ugly. Oh, yes. Even then. <laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> Christian? Yes, only I... I don't understand. One what? minute. I must... go and say a few words to someone. But... It will only take a minute. Captain. What is it? You're so pale. She does not love me anymore. What do you mean? Of course she does. No. She loves you. No. Yes. She loves only my soul now. No. Yes. That means it is you she loves. And you love her. I? I see. I know. Yes. Yes, I love her. You love her with all your heart? More than that. Tell her so. No. Why not? Look at me. Look at my face. She would love me even if I were ugly. She told you that? Yes. So, there it is. Oh my God, she... She said that. You, you, you're, you're a fool to take her at her word. She said that knowing you were not ugly. That is what we must find out for sure. No, Christian, please. Tell her everything. Let her choose. No, please, you I, torture me. I will not destroy your chance of happiness because I have a pretty face. I will not destroy yours because I have a gift for words. I say tell her. Do that and she won't love either of us. I will not go on being my own rival. You are her husband. Our marriage never was consummated. It can be a no. Christian! No, I want her to love me for the poor fool that I am or not at all. One way or the other, I must know. Go and tell her everything. Let her choose. It'll be you. God. I hope so. Roxanne. No. Cyrano has something important to tell you. Important? It's... It's something Christian feels you should know. Does, does he still doubt what I told him just now? What you told him just now? Is it true? Yes. I should love him even if he were... A... Yes. The word comes hard in front of me, I know. Even if he were... No, go on, say it. It won't hurt me. Ugly. Even if Christian were ugly. Yes. 
Even then I should love him with all my heart. Listen. Gunfire. It's begun. Even if he were deformed? Yes. Hideous? Yes. Grotesque? Oh, nothing could make him grotesque in my eyes. But would you love him then as much as you do now? I think perhaps I should love him even more. Oh, God, it's true. Roxanne. Yes? Listen to me. There is something... There is something you must know. It's all over. What's it's wrong? all over. I can never. No, I, I, I can never. Uh, what's happening? Roxanne, what? listen to me. Yes. I swear to you that the spirit of Christian, that, that his soul was. Was? The first what? shot fired by the enemy, he walked right into the field. Christian! What was he doing out there? What in God's name was he doing out there? Here they come. Close ranks. I have told her she loves you. Yes, my love. Stand by! No. Oh, God, no, please. Oh, no. No. He's not dead, is he? Open your charges! I feel his cheek grow cold against mine. Ready! Letter over his heart. Aim! For me. Fire! <laughs> The attack has begun. Come. No, stay a little longer. Christian, Christian, my one beloved, my only love, stay with me. Stay with me. Oh, heaven. Heaven, Christian is dead. He is dead. <laughs> oh, God, he is dead, and so am I. My love mourns for me and does not know. He still visits her, then. He has not missed a Saturday in almost 15 years since Madame Roxanne first came to us, so filled with sorrow. Cyrano, faithful as always. He is still so poor. He is too proud to take charity, even from old friends. Cyrano does not change. He attacks the hypocrites, the false idols, with more ferocity than ever now. He has more enemies than any man in Paris. I'm afraid sometimes. I'm afraid that... But surely, Monsieur Lebray, no one would try to harm him. Not openly, no. His skill as a swordsman remains unchallenged. But his writings offend so many powerful men that I fear some carefully arranged accident will befall him one day. Then you must see that he is careful. Careful? Cyrano? <laughs> that I've tried to do for half a lifetime. Well, perhaps a word from Madame Roxanne. She will be joining us in a moment. It's almost time for Monsieur Cyrano's visit. Each Saturday he comes and sits with her, and never once has he even been late. Roxanne, still in mourning. I sometimes think Cyrano's visits are her only real pleasure Hello, now. Mother. Where is Roxanne? I will send her to you. Lebray, I'm glad you're here. Well, what is it, my friend? Cyrano. I went to see him not an hour ago. As I walked up the street, I saw him come out, but before I could catch up to him, he reached the corner, and just as he passed by, there was a workman above at a window. What happened? Just as he passed by, the workman let a heavy load of wood fall. I knew it. Lebray, it was no accident. I knew it. I ran to him. God, the coward! He was lying there in the street, Is blood he... gushing from his forehead. Alive? Barely. Is he conscious? Oh, yes. I carried him to his room. Did you call a doctor? Yes. Oh, if you'd seen his head all bandaged. If he tries to move, he may die. Quickly, let us go to him at once. But what about Roxanne? We haven't a moment to lose. Come! You're not here? Well, that's strange. I don't understand. Well, no matter. They will return. I shall wait here for Monsieur Cyrano. Thank you, Mother. Mm. 
Yahweh. He will be coming now. Uh, my thimble. Why, the bell is stopped. And Cyrano not here. He's never been late before. Oh, nothing surely could keep him away. My scissors. Soon I shall hear the tapping of his cane. Oh. Another leaf. How hard it is to match these faded colors. For the first time in nearly 15 years. Yes. Maddening. I, 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 I was detained. Yes? By a, a visitor. Most, most unexpected. Was your visitor tiresome? Let us say, uh, inopportune. An old friend. Or rather, uh, an old acquaintance of mine. Did you tell him to go away? For the time being, yes. I said, this is Saturday, that I had an engagement, one I could not possibly miss, even for him. Mm. I, I told him, I told him to come back in a, about an hour. Oh, your friend will have to wait. I shall keep you here until dark. I'm afraid I may have to leave a little before dark. The leaves. Yes. Oh, what beautiful colors. Hmm? Look at them fall. Yes. They know how to die. It's a little journey, really, from branch to earth. Little dread of mingling with a common dust. But they fall so gracefully. A fall that is almost like Floating. Cyrano, are you sad? Huh? Hmm? No. Roxanne. Well, then let the leaves fall and give me all the news from court. Be my gazette. Oh, yes. Your gazette. Well, now, <laughs> let, let me see. Um, last Saturday, the 19th of October, 1655, uh, the, the king was ill after eight helpings of orange marmalade. Hmm. His illness was brought before the high court and found guilty of treason, whereupon his majesty revived. Sunday the 20th, the queen gave a grand ball at which they burned 673 and one half <laughs> wax candles. <laughs> Note. Our troops in Austria have been victorious. Latest, three sorcerers have been hanged. And the little dog of Madame the Tisse was obliged to take an enema. That will do, Monsieur de Bergerac. Oh. Monday, her. Uh, oh. oh, nothing. Her uh, uh, Countess Brassai took a new lover. Oh. Tuesday. The 22nd, all the court has gone to Fontainebleau. Wednesday, uh, Count de Fiesque spoke to Madame de Mongla. She said no. Hmm. Thursday, Monsigny was Queen of France. Very nearly. Ooh. Friday, uh, Madame de Mongla said yes. Today, Today, Saturday, the Saturday, the, the twenty
Sit. No. Oh. Oh, but... I, I'm all right. I'm all right. It's my old wound, you know. Oh. My old wound, a ras. Oh, Somet sometimes. My poor friend. No. It, it, it will be gone soon. Oh. There. There, there. It, it's gone. Oh. Yes, yes. We all have our old wounds, hmm? I have mine. This faded scrap of writing. It's difficult to read now. Oh, but the blood and tears. Christian's letter. Yes. Did, did you not tell me that one day you would let me read it? This letter you, you wish to read? Yes, I, I, I do wish. Now, T today. Here. May I? Open it and read. Arras, the 3rd of July, 1640. Loud. Farewell, Roxanne, for today I must die. I know it will be today, my beloved, and my heart is heavy with so much love for you, still unspoken. Never more shall my eyes drink the sight of you like wine, never more, with a look that is a kiss, shall they follow the sweet grace that is you. How well you read his letter. I remember now so well a way you have of brushing a lock of hair from your forehead with one hand, and my heart cries out. You, you really? It cries out and keeps crying. Farewell, my dear. My dearest. In a voice. My heart's own. My own dear treasure. In such a voice. My love. Long ago. I am never away from you. Even now I am with you. In another world I shall be the man who loves you who loves you beyond measure, who how, loves... How can you read now? It's so dark. Oh. And all these years, you have been the old friend who came to me to be amusing. Roxanne. It was you. No, no, Roxanne. I might have known every time I heard you speak my name. No, it was not I. It was, it was you. I swear. I understand everything now. All the letters, it was you. No. The dear, foolish words, it was you. No. The voice in the dark, it was you. On my honor. And the soul, it was all you. I never loved you. You loved me. No, he loved you. Even now, you love me. No! And why so great a no? No. No, my own dear love. I loved you. Oh, how many things have died. And how many are now reborn. Why? Why were you silent all those years, knowing he hadn't written this letter, that the tears on it were yours? But the blood on it was his. Oh, what recklessness. I knew it. Here he is. Yes, here I am. 
He has killed himself coming here. My God. I, I have not finished my gazette. Saturday, the 26th of October, 1655, an hour or so before dinner, Monsieur de Bergerac was ambushed, My God. taken by surprise. His battlefield, a gutter. His noble foe, a lackey. The weapon, a load of wood. Oh, God. Oh, fate loves a jest. I have missed everything, even my own death. Oh, oh Mr. Oh, no. No, no, no blubbering. Sister. No, no, please. Don't go. I may not be here when you return. Harmony. A little harmony is all I need. Listen. You shall not die. I love you. No, that is not the way the story ends. You remember when Beauty said to the beast, I love you? Well, his ugliness disappeared and he turned into a handsome young prince. But you see, I, I'm the same as ever. Uh, a little worse for wear. Oh, your life has been unhappy because of me. No, Roxanne. No. Without you, I never would have known the gentle sweetness of a woman. My mother did not like to look on me. I never had a sister. And later, of course, I... I feared a mistress who might have mockery in her smile. But because of you, I, I've had one friend, more than a friend, across my life, one whispering silken gown. Your other friend is looking down at you. I see. I see. I have loved one man in my life, and I have lost him twice. I shall be there presently, Le Bray, on the moon, <laughs> without having to invent any machines. It's the cadets of Gascogne! Fundamental form. What was he doing out there? What in God's name was he doing out there? No. Not here. Please. Not here. Not like this. No, no, no one. Help me, no one. Do you hear? I see him now. He approaches, shod in marble, gloved in lead. Well, he finds me on my feet, sword in hand. What's that you say? Hopeless? Of course, a man does not fight only to win. No, far better to fight when everything is hopeless. Who are you? And you? And you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, who, who are all these specters? Ah, you unmask now. I know you all. My ancient enemies. Falsehood. There! Prejudice. There! Cowardice, there! Compromise, there! Oh. Vanity. I knew you might conquer me in the end. But no! I fight on! And on! And on! And on! And on! And on, and on, and on, and on. Oh, death. All my laurels you will take away. 
and all my roses too. Well, take them, do. But there is yet one treasure that I hold. One thing in spite of you I call my own. And when I stand before my God tonight, it will be there. And my salute shall sweep away the stars from his blue threshold high. One thing, unstained, unsullied by this world, in spite of everything, my own. And that is... That is... My... Panache. Thank you. 